the FBI has made a shocking discovery about Jay-Z's role in Diddy's trafficking ring. Sean Carter aided and abetted or was directly involved. It's about to get real tense, and there's a lot of girls and boys who are still trapped inside the machine, working, paying their flesh debts. And this is all coming to a terrible head for Diddy, because it only means one thing. Jay-Z is going to try and get to him before he can snitch. Were you surprised that there were so many cameras in his houses? No! So let me ask you, when you hear that Cassie was told to hire male escorts to come in the, what they call freak-offs now, yeah. um, is that something normal that yeah. happens in Hollywood? Yeah. Freak-offs. Yeah. Everybody know that. Yeah. I've been saying it. So why does, why does Puffy, why, does, why now? Why? Because he's the acceptable monster at this time, like R. Kelly was the last time I sat on this couch. So who's next? Y'all don't see the lineup? Jay-Z is setting Diddy up! He lined up D. Haven, stole his life and identity. He lined up Big L, stole his life and identity. He lined up Dame Dash, stole his life identity and took his love lined up R. Kelly it's no surprise that Diddy has long been placed under super watch for those uninitiated that typically means that the prisoner is under high security so no one and not a single thing can get to them before their trial many have theorized that Diddy has been held under such surveillance because he could bring down some valuable empires with what he knows, foremost of them being Jay-Z's career and wealth. Well, well, did he start snitching? He better. But the only thing I'm interested in him talking about is everything he knows about Kathy Coriana White. See, I know you know what happened. <laughs> Diddy, I know that. You and Jay-Z. Down in Vegas, the towel with Claudia. Why don't you just talk about Kathy? That might help. That might help a lot. Kathy Coriana White. Jay-Z's pregnant mistress, who died 24 hours after she announced that she was going public with their relationship and the baby. While he was married to be sick. Was it an aneurysm, Diddy? Or are you the one who paid the same coroner that you... <laughs> oh, Diddy, you should talk. Many people allegedly played a role in orchestrating Diddy's infamous white parties, where, according to reports, male and female victims were d and violated while incapacitated. Derek Parker, also known as the Hip Hop Cop, shared his thoughts during an interview on the YouTube show The Scoop. Regarding Diddy's rise to power, Parker has some very interesting thoughts. But with both him and Jay-Z having so much to lose, it is being speculated that they might go for each other's throats in order to protect their money-making empires. I mean, it's not like both of them don't have a history of being seemingly involved with suspicious deaths. In Jay-Z's case, it was Aaliyah. We know that Diddy and Jay-Z have both been friends with R. Kelly for years, and Jay-Z continued to make albums with R. Kelly after all the information came out with him and Aaliyah. And I'd say this is because Jay-Z was pretty comfortable with the fact that he knew he also wanted Aaliyah, and honestly, so did Diddy. And Aaliyah's death has never sat right with me. There are so many sketchy things around her death that just don't make sense. The fact that Aaliyah was given a substance and knocked unconscious and then was carried onto this plane that she didn't want to 
blanket on because she thought that something was wrong with it that led to her death is just crazy. There's also even more disturbing information about Aaliyah's pilot of that plane and they said that he had just joined the program two days prior before the flight and he wasn't even supposed to be the pilot on that flight. Aaliyah was sitting in a taxi as her team and the flight crew argued nearby about whether or not to take off and she complained of having a headache. Now reportedly a baggage handler nearby said that someone from her entourage gave her a pill. She took the pill and that right after she fell into a very deep sleep. So deep in fact that she was carried onto the airplane still asleep and may not have even been aware that she was on the airplane. Now we should say we don't know what that pill was. It could have been aspirin. Maybe she was just very tired from a long video shoot uh, and the baggage handler did say that she took it willingly but it does reveal some new information about those final moments. After the crash investigators determined the small plane was carrying about 700 pounds over its limit and this is important the center of gravity was too far back in the aircraft. The pilot did not want to make this trip and he reportedly argued with Aaliyah's team because he thought that it was unsafe so he did make those calculations and he did decide that it was unsafe however after a protracted negotiation they went through with that flight. Now we did also learn some new things about this pilot according to autopsy results he had both alcohol and cocaine in his system. The pilot the did. The pilot did. Whoa. He was not the authorized pilot for that plane and he had just joined that company a few days prior to that flight. In a book by journalist Kathy Iandoli, a man from the Abaco Islands named Kingsley Russell shares a story that sheds new light on Aaliyah's final moments before boarding the plane that led to her tragic death. In a YouTube video posted shortly after Kobe Bryant's fatal helicopter crash in 2020, Russell explained that the memory of Aaliyah's crash came flooding back. He recalled watching as Aaliyah, unconscious after being given a pill by a team member, was carried onto the plane against her previous protests. Russell vividly remembers hearing the horrific sound of the aircraft crashing shortly after witnessing Aaliyah being taken on board, despite her earlier refusal to fly. Mary J. Blige, who was a victim of Sean Combs, are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah amongst each other. Think about that. You got a Diddy victim, you got a Jay-Z victim, and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened, and yet, sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. Think of the power it had. According to Russell, Aaliyah had been visibly upset when she saw the small plane and refused to board, especially after hearing concerns that the aircraft might be overloaded with passengers and luggage. She climbed into a taxi van, complaining of a headache, and decided to take a nap while her team continued negotiations with the pilot. Ultimately, Despite her protests, Aaliyah was carried onto the plane while still asleep. The rest is history. But that did not mean the end of Jay-Z's seemingly murderous rampages. Jaguar Wright has alleged that he also attempted to take Blue Cantrell's life. Another crazy instance that I think about is Jay-Z and Blue Cantrell, and Diddy was obviously in this photo as well, but he is cut out, but he's right there next to Kim Porter. Now, it was rumored that Jay-Z and Blue Cantrell had an affair going on while he was dating Beyonce. Blue Cantrell actually did an interview with Wendy Williams where she talked about sleeping with Jay-Z, and then shortly after that interview released, Blue Cantrell was hospitalized after ranting that she was poisoned on the streets. Blue Cantrell went running through the streets ranting about people trying to unalive her until police took her into custody for a physical evaluation. Blue Cantrell was running around the streets screaming that somebody was trying to unalive her by giving her poisonous gas. Oh my God! I heard you talking about the horse blue. <laughs> oh my God! Are really lockdown? I think so. I think they're in love. I think they're in love. Is politics speaking? No, I really do think they're in love. I have a big crush on him, though. I'll tell you that much. I still have a crush on him, no. No. Sure? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I'm really selective about it. What? Really. I really like him, though. And I don't care. I don't care who he's dating. I, I always had a crush on him. If he came in right now and we were all not here. What? I'm just saying. You're in New York. Yeah, OK. 
okay? And what? And what you ran mean? into him, and, and everything was right and right and right and right. Would you make that play? Um. I wouldn't turn it down. Let's just put it that way. But while there is a lot of circumstantial evidence and hearsay surrounding Jay-Z's alleged crimes, it seems he is currently winning the battle because Diddy keeps being hit by lawsuit after lawsuit, each one worse than the last. Another batch of lawsuits has been filed against Diddy, including one alleging that he d***ed a 13-year-old girl Two other lawsuits were filed in Las Vegas and Los Angeles, respectively. Sean Diddy Combs, a music mogul, is facing a series of new civil lawsuits, including allegations he sexually assaulted two teenagers. Our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, has the details. Aaron, good morning. Good morning, Whit. This new batch of civil lawsuits accuses Sean Combs of being and sexually assaulting seven more alleged victims. One of them says she was 13 at the time, and certain celebrities were there watching. One of the suits is from Jane Doe, when she attempted to attend the MTV Video Music Awards. The first page of the lawsuit comes out swinging, reading, quote, defendant Combs and a 13-year-old girl at a house party. Many others were present, but did nothing to stop it. Some participated in it. Combs has been allowed for years to conduct himself in this manner without any consequences. He believes he's above the law. He is not. This next part is echoed through all five lawsuits that behind the facade of being a three-time Grammy Award winner, discovering and developing multiple famous musical artists, and ranking on Forbes' list of the highest paid entertainers in the world, there existed something sinister, a dark underbelly of crime, sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, bribery, and prostitution. Combs is a menace to society, women, and children. The lawsuits state Combs' business enterprise is central to the pervasive acts of sexual abuse committed by him during the last decades. That's companies like Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Books Holdings, Bad Boy Records, and Combs Enterprises that have been headquartered in both Los Angeles and Manhattan. On the surface, these are legitimate operations, but behind the curtains, they were allegedly fronts to sexually abuse, threaten, and coerce hundreds of individuals through sexual quid pro quo schemes. According to all five suits, Combs and his staff engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and prostitution. This abuse was at times verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual. As part of his pattern of abuse, Combs manipulated both men and women to participate in highly orchestrated performances of sexual activity with both commercial sex workers and unsuspecting party goers. After only one drink, the plaintiff claimed she began to feel woozy and lightheaded and went to an unoccupied bedroom to lie down. Once inside, two men asked plaintiff to sign a non-disclosure agreement, informing her that she could not discuss what happened at the party. She gave them her name and signed the form, but did not receive a copy. Eventually, Jane Doe accepted a drink that was reddish-yellow mixture, tasting of orange juice, cranberry juice, and something bitter. Jane Doe believes Diddy, or his associate, slipped something into her drink. And the lawsuit even includes a photo of the container used to put GHB into drinks. After drinking just one drink, plaintiff began to feel woozy and lightheaded, making her need to lie down. Looking for a place to rest, plaintiff entered what she believed to be an empty bedroom so she could lie down for a moment. She did not lock the door. Soon after, Combs, along with a male and female celebrity, entered the room. Combs aggressively approached plaintiff with a crazed look in his eyes, grabbed her and said, you are ready to party. As Jane Doe recalls, Diddy threw her toward a male celebrity, listed only as Celebrity A, who took off her clothes. After that, she says Celebrity A raped her, while Diddy and a female celebrity, referred to as Celebrity B, watched along. After all this, Celebrity A held Jane Doe down as Diddy raped her. Celebrity B was still watching all this. Later, Diddy tried to force Jane Doe to perform oral sex on him, but she resisted and hit him in the neck. At that point, he stopped. Jane Doe then ran from the room naked, searching for an exit to the home. She eventually put her clothes back on and ran to a nearby gas station. The clerk there noticed Jane Doe seemed to be distressed and allowed her to use the phone. Jane Doe then called her dad, saying she had lied about where she was going and asked to be picked up. Since then, Jane Doe says she's fallen into a deep depression that continues to affect every facet of her life. Diddy has vehemently rejected all claims made against him.
Diddy Council declined to comment, citing their earlier statement that they had complete trust in the facts, legal defenses, and the court process. In court, the truth will prevail. The same can be said for another Jane Doe, who says she was assaulted by Diddy in Las Vegas in 2014. This Jane Doe lives in Alabama now, but says she met up with Diddy at a party on Memorial Day weekend in 2014. Describing the setting, Jane Doe says Diddy's infamous Las Vegas parties were legendary events, known for their exclusivity, extravagance, and celebrity guest list. These high-profile parties attracted A-list celebrities from across the entertainment, fashion, and business worlds. The events were lavishly decorated, featured live music performances, and boasted top-tier food and beverages. The atmosphere at these parties was one of opulence and luxury, often making headlines for their celebrity guest lists, over-the-top entertainment, and the stunning aesthetics of the event. Many unsuspecting individuals were recruited to attend these parties. Some individuals were recruited in various cities and were paid to fly in and to attend these functions. Jane Doe attended one such party when she and two of her friends visited Las Vegas in 2014. The group was staying at Hotel Rio. While there, Jane Doe reached out to other people she'd met in the entertainment industry to see if there were any cool events taking place. She reached out to someone only identified as International Smooth, someone she'd met at a party in Miami just a few years prior. Based on his Instagram stories, Jane Doe knew he was in Las Vegas and soon discovered he worked as a party promoter. After that, he invited her to an exclusive party at a popular poolside lounge called Club Rehab. The only catch was that Jane Doe had to go to the party alone, meaning her two friends couldn't join. After what the lawsuit calls some awkwardness, Jane Doe relented and headed to the party solo. While at the party, Jane Doe met many celebrities, including Mary J. Blige, Lil' Kim, and Nicki Minaj. She saw more that she did not meet. Plaintiff Jane Doe took pictures or videos with many of these celebrities and posted them to her private Instagram page. She also met Diddy, who expressed hope that she was enjoying the party. As the event at Club Rehab started to wind down, Jane Doe was invited by Smooth to an after party at Diddy's suite in the Planet Hollywood Hotel. Once there, she spoke with Diddy again, who directed her to a bar area stocked with bottles of his De Leon tequila. He encouraged her to help herself, and that's when it started. She only had one or two drinks, but about 40 minutes later, Jane Doe started to feel nauseated and dizzy. She even began to lose control of her motor functions. So Jane Doe found Smooth and told him she wasn't feeling well, so she planned to leave. Instead, he pointed her in the direction of an empty bedroom and told her to lie down. He said Jane Doe would be left alone and the door would be locked. The next thing Jane Doe recalls is waking up the following morning, feeling very groggy and sore. Her entire body hurt and it felt difficult to move. As soon as she awoke, she saw Combs in the corner of the room, shirtless and yelling loudly and with animation at someone over the phone. He was the only person in the room with her and it was clear that someone else had been in bed with her. Out of fear and confusion, plaintiff remained silent and still until Combs left the room and she heard the front door to the suite close. When Jane Doe got up, she realized she was naked and she was extremely sore in her genital area. At that point, she realized she'd been by Diddy. Jane Doe left the room and went back to Hotel Rio, where her friends were staying. She slept for the next two days, only remembering vague glimpses of her friends trying to wake her up and offer her water. Afterwards, her friends told her that they did their best to take care of her during this time, but she was largely incoherent. Jane Doe says since 2014, not a day has gone by that she didn't think of this incident. Jane Doe believes she was drugged with some spiked Ciroc vodka, while John Doe says he was sexually assaulted at a party promoting Ciroc. This party apparently happened in Los Angeles in or around 2022. It was hosted by Ciroc and Diddy, who owned some stake in the company and was a celebrity spokesperson for the drink. Prior to this party, John Doe had a long-standing relationship with Diddy. John Doe is a businessman in LA whose company specializes in renting luxury cars and jewelry. In the past, John Doe had rented cars or jewelry to Diddy and members of his entourage. Combs began awkwardly moving closer to plaintiff. As he did so, Combs removed his pants and exposed his genitals to plaintiff. Combs continued to move closer and then grabbed plaintiff's genitals through his pants, squeezing them in a rough and sexual manner. Plaintiff, shocked and disoriented, 
froze momentarily and did not know how to respond to the weirdly inappropriate sexual advances made by Combs. This situation apparently escalated until someone referred to as professional athlete A entered the office and interrupted this John Doe left the party and went home but took a picture of the Ciroc bottle from the party. This same year as that John Doe is alleged to another John Doe alleges he too was a by Diddy at a Los Angeles after party. This John Doe is a personal trainer who's familiar with celebrities and notable people who he coaches in health and fitness. One such client was a fashion designer who in 2022 told John Doe she'd shared his workout videos with Diddy. Diddy was apparently impressed and wanted to meet John Doe and even feature him in a video. So this fashion designer invited John Doe to attend an exclusive award show after party hosted by Diddy. On June 27, 2022, a black Lincoln Navigator arrived at John Doe's home to escort him to Diddy's house in the Hollywood Hills. When John Doe arrived, one of Combs' business associates greeted him at the entrance. This person explained plaintiff John Doe needed to execute a non-disclosure agreement as a condition of entry into the party. Plaintiff ultimately consented to the agreement because he wanted to meet Combs and have an opportunity to promote himself and his business. John Doe didn't get a copy of this NDA, but instead was handed a drink that looked like tequila soda with a cranberry mixer. This, for the most part, seemed to be Diddy's M.O. But what's most interesting in these lawsuits is the involvement of celebrities. And we know for a fact that Jay-Z not only was closely involved with Diddy, someone accused of sex trafficking, but also R. Kelly, someone convicted of pit of So really the question is, how long before Jay-Z is arrested?